Tonight, the Stig drives some very fast farm equipment, I hail a taxi, and finishing with something that I'm reliably informed is a bit of a fan favourite around here. I'm Chris Harris, and this is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Ah, yes, the Stig, our very own UFO, unidentified fast object, the world's least obedient racing driver. But that's basically a river, and the Elise definitely doesn't have a snorkel or a life jacket. There. Loving your work, Stiggy. Yes! That's it! The honourable art of drifting. Well, they did say to use the fastest route possible, and if there's one thing faster than a racing line, it's a straight line. You've got to hand it to the stick. Made it! Was there ever any doubt? The Series 1 Elise is, after all, one of the best handling cars ever made. The Sport 190 is its hardcore cousin, a road-going racer you can drive to work and across fields, it turns out. But if it's true agricultural transport you're after, we have just the thing. Oh, a BMW 1M. Great car. Hang on, that's my BMW 1M. Seriously, not funny. Who gave Stick the keys? I mean, I literally just cleaned it. Now it's going to smell of onions. Odor stick. Does 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, my 1M. Stig's way beyond that now. That's the last time we leave Stig unattended. Am I the only one who remembers Budapest? Well, this isn't stressful to watch. Not at all. Smoke! Please leave me some tread for the drive home, Stiggy. Seriously, come on. It's a BMW, so of course it's rear wheel drive. 50-50 weight distribution, too. It's a natural-born drifter. Three-litre straight six, 335 horsepower, two turbos, and as much sideways action as you like. One of the best BMWs ever made this, born to be driven by me. Got to admit, though, Stig does kind of suit it. It's electronically restrained to 155 miles an hour, but it could definitely go quicker.
almost there now. Oh, what a shame. I was really getting into that. Just park it up now, Stig, and uh, mind the curbs. Anyone else want to go? No? Don't say I didn't ask. Right. Back to the actual script now, if you don't mind. This is Top Gear's track tour. It's a tractor, obviously, but with a 5.7-litre Chevy V8 making 500 horsepower. And here comes the Stig again. Farm Stig. Born in a barn, they say. Weaned by pigs. Can plough a field in under six seconds. There's a speed camera on the M68. Rumor has it, it only flashes above 87.2 miles an hour. Our tractor has been officially clocked at 87.2 miles an hour, making it the world's fastest tractor. But I reckon it'll go even faster. Steady on, Stig. Those are 54-inch mud tyres, remember? They get a bit squishy through the corners. Nobody needs to get the harvest in that quickly. Right, here comes the speed camera. Hope they've put some film in it. Have you ever seen anything like it? That's a new tractor speed record and some impressively fast farming. If you want to spread slurry in a hurry, you know what you need. Now, though, it's time to hail a ride in something completely different. I called a cab earlier. Local company, Aisha's Taxis. Excellent service. Got me here in no time. Unsurprising, really. I mean, look at what turned up. Hands down, the quickest cab I've ever been in. Which got me thinking, how fast could this thing actually go? So I had a word with Aisha, asked if we could borrow her cab for a trip to the seaside. To Bamborough Beach, in fact, where we could stretch the taxi's legs a bit. Although, I might have forgotten to tell her who'd be driving. You've guessed it. The cabbie will always get you to your destination very early, but probably won't be anywhere near where you asked to go. Oh, I see. The Stig's warming up the tyres. Tires. A good old-fashioned rolling burnout. We ordered some spare rubber, right? Now that's what I call a cab. No clattery diesel engine here. This has a V12 with over 750 horsepower, plus bucket seats. Beaded bucket seats, presumably. Oh, yes, spot on. Lightning reactions, quick hands. From now on, I say all cabs should have wide bodies and flared arches. Think about it. More stability, more speed, more downforce, more room for your terrified passengers. It even has slick tyres for maximum grip on a bone-dry drag strip. So they should be interesting when we hit the beach.
work from the stick there. I'd say we're nicely warmed up for the next bit. So here we are, then. In the old days, daredevils used smooth, sandy beaches like this to see how fast their cars could go. Many early land speed records were set on beaches. Miles of space, nothing to hit. Sounds easy, right? Oh, look at that! Laying some pretty squirmy tracks there, Stiggy. That's what happens with 750 horsepower on sand. But that's the challenge here. Go as fast as possible all the way to the top of the beach. The thing is, there's something I haven't told the stick. Record rules say you must do two runs, one in each direction, before the clock runs out. Which means, Stiggy, pulling off the world's swiftest U-turn, which of course is when the handbrake comes in handy. Star ride from the stick there. Mini cab, maximum speed. Next time I need a ride to the airport, I know who I'm calling. And all of this off-road action has given me an idea. This is Project EAT. That's EAT for E-Class All-Terrain. It's a modified Merc built by the Top Gear magazine team for finding bears in the woods. Not many bears around here, though. Mostly badgers. Still, there's definitely some terrain, lots of it. All you need is a good sense of direction. Or not. Here's Stig again, looking lost. Terrified of maps, apparently. Inner compass points directly south. The EAT has a silky... EAT has a silky smooth V6 diesel. It'll do 155 miles an hour on the road, but where we're going, we won't need roads. First up, it's a trip to the top of Glen Rannoch, by any means necessary, and against the clock, naturally. But don't worry, it has knobbly tyres, and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tyres. It's a four-wheel drive car on mud tyres completely sideways. You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. Who says you need an SUV to go off-road? The EAT has four-wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles. Ancient burial mounds, for example. It is a Mercedes wagon, so it's tough. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. That's some proper hang time. Actual air suspension. It also has 340 horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. Now it's 
time to head way over there to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. Home comforts the EAT, charges for almost anything you can charge, cosy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine, everything the intrepid explorer could ever need. All this adventure kits had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency. Good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel, and there's another one in the back. Just don't confuse them with your drinking water. to the final stretch now. Just the small matter of getting up Arthur's seat. The clock's ticking, so better step on it, Stiggy. The top of Arthur's seat. No idea who Arthur is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around. Now, I said we'd be driving some British classics, and you don't get more British than a car built in Birmingham designed by a man from... Greece. Anyway, here it is, an original Mini Cooper S, an icon of 60s engineering. It was designed for cities, but this is the wide-body one, so we're going to need a bit more room. And I know just the place. Ready, Stig? The Mini is cleverly packaged, capable of carrying four people and their luggage. Hand luggage, presumably. The Cooper S was the car to beat on the famous Monte Carlo rally. It pretty much wiped the floor with the competition. West was developed by a bloke called John Cooper, who also built F1 cars, so it had real racing pedigree.
And it wasn't just Monte Carlo either. The British Saloon Car Championship, the Thousand Lakes Rally, even the Australian Touring Car Championship. Almost any time the Mini turned up, it won. Here we are! Told you it was spacious. We've got everything we need here. An airfield, the original rapid runabout, and the Stig. I'm looking forward to this. Look at that! Laying down some rubber there. Not that it has much to lay. After all, tiny wheels mean tiny tyres. They sold nearly five and a half million minis. But only this one could fly, apparently. Someone tell the stick we're done now. It's time for a spot of sightseeing. Here we are then, Edinburgh where it's time for a spot of turbocharged tourism with this, the mighty Porsche GT2 RS. All we need now is our tour guide. Muck Stig, the world's worst Scotsman, allergic to tartan, absolutely petrified of bagpipes, or so I've heard. Right, let's see if we can visit every bell tower in Edinburgh and get back here before they all stop ringing. Perfect there. It's wider than a regular 911, this GT2, and about 20 times more terrifying. Basically, the perfect device for nipping in and out of city traffic. What a car this is. 3.8-litre flat six, two turbos, 700 horsepower, all wrapped up in carbon fibre with wings, stripes, holes and vents for snorting in the air. Nippy little thing, isn't it? Zero to 60 takes 2.7 seconds. Just the job for a bit of speedy sightseeing. It might be 
be street legal, but it's only a pair of fireproof underpants away from being a full-blown racing car. It's a real masterpiece of engineering, this GT2 RS. The wheels are made from magnesium, the exhaust is titanium. It's exotic, savage and utterly bonkers. I love it! It's limited to 211 miles an hour, any faster, and it would need special tyres. But with the stick behind the wheel, who knows? Excellent hooliganry. That's what 700 horsepower and rear-wheel drive will do for you if you have the guts for it and an effective laundry detergent. Into the final stretch now. Note to stick, remember to park properly at the end and watch out for traffic wardens. Good work. Hard on those carbon ceramic brakes now. They could stop a locomotive dead in its tracks. I told you we'd finish with a fan's favourite, and here it is. No, not the lorry. The thing on the back, under the tarp. You'll love it. But first, we need to move it into position. Thankfully, we have our very own haulage expert, a trucker's trucker. No load too large. Yes, it's Big Rig Stig. Right, now take it easy, Stig. That's some expensive cargo you have back there. Costs as much as a house, and weighs about the same, too. Worked out what it is yet? OK, here are some cryptic clues. It's all-wheel drive, but not four-wheel drive. It's a wagon, but you definitely don't need a horse to pull it. Hmm. Nicely judged. What a machine. Rear-wheel drive too, you know. Not that I'd encourage any sort of sideways behaviour before delivering that cargo. That's five tonnes of flatbed carrying four tonnes on its back. Don't you just hate getting stuck behind a slow, lumbering old... Wait a minute. It's actually accelerating. Up a hill. I guess that's what 900 foot-pounds of torque does for you. That plus trucker stig.
almost there. Just park it up and we'll whip those covers off. Good job, Big Rig Stig. Suits you, you know. Although, come to think of it, maybe pickups are more your style. Especially the one we have in store. I give you the Mercedes G63 AMG 6x6. It's the ultimate off-roader, a four-ton, six-wheel sports utility truck. Basically, a G-Wagon with the back half of a pickup thrown in for free. Up front is a 5.5-litre twin-turbo V8. Usually, it's limited to 100 miles an hour, but not this one. Someone call air traffic control. I'm pretty sure you need a special license to fly one of these. With all of the wheels comes all of the grip. The 6x6 turns mountains into motorways. Is there anything it can't conquer? How did you do that? It's six metres long. That's like drifting a canal boat. It makes 536 horsepower and more than 760 newton meters of torque. With that speed limiter removed and with the stick behind the wheel, it'll do 125 miles an hour with a bit of a run-up. It's tough, the 6x6. After all, it was originally made for the Australian Army. It's basically a tank with heated seats. It can wade through a meter of water, this thing. Most cars need full scuba kit at that depth. Ridiculous. Top job there, Stig. Take tomorrow off. No idea what Stig does with a day off. Experimental dance, goat yoga, bog snorkeling. Anyway, I've been Chris Harris, I still am, and this has been the Top Gear Horizon Special. Thanks for coming. Now, let's go see what this Fortsathon live thing's all about.